Hello lovely people and welcome to Maria's Calming Space. Today I'm trying something new, jelly plate printing. So I'll just show you the gel plate. Okay, it's a piece of gel. Um, and it's a bit squidgy as well. So this is the gel plate. It's got its protective covers on at the moment and you get a leaflet with it, which gives you a brief description and instructions on the back. And then inside there is information on use, cleaning and care. So I've got a brayer as well, which I'll be using to apply the paint. So I'll just move that out of the way. Got a range of paints colors that I'm going to be using these are acrylic paints I may also try out some gouache paints I've also got uh, a selection of papers to try so I've got some heavyweight through 220 GSM I've got some acrylic paint paint sorry acrylic paper and that's got I don't know if you can see that's got a texture texture to it already I've got some pastel papers and watercolour papers as well. So I'm going to try printing on all of those. I've also got um, just some materials that I've collected, bubble wrap, cardboard, uh, foam, bits and pieces, just to get some texture on the prints. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go and set that up and I'll be back very soon. Okay, so I went on and I did my jelly plate printing and I had an awful lot of fun. Um, it brought me a lot of joy. Um, so, but at the same time, I did learn a lot. The first thing I learned was about the movement of the jelly plate because this plate actually sticks to the paper but I had my table this cellophane top so the actual paper that it was on was moving while I was braying at times so I've got a clip of that and also in that clip it will show about the amount of paint you put on the plate because you need a very thin layer and the very the, th the nice thin layer um, produces better quality prints. It's all fun though, so it's it's obviously a learning curve. Um, so I will show you that <laughs> clip of the jelly plate moving while I'm braying and also the amount of thickness of paint that I put on with that blue and um, was not able, I wasn't able to lift off. I think it's the blue that I'm gonna show you actually. Um, yeah, the lint off the, the um, block print that I was using. So getting back to the prints, yeah, these are some prints that I did. I think the thing that I realised was that um, but I was actually doing um, a layer, putting something on there to, to give the relief so that when I printed, the pattern came up. And then instead of just covering up maybe part of it, uh, like, like this one, so you get to see, because I masked that off with a heart shape, you get to see the layer underneath but I actually, um, with these ones, it took me a, sort of a while, but what I really loved underneath was being completely covered by the next layer. Um, it did give it depth, but I think, to say, to, to mask a segment off, or just do half the jelly plate, so you can see the contrast in the layers. And the other thing I learnt was, um, now, some people like this effect, um, where you've got three different prints here, one, two, three, but 
if I'd wanted to line them up or, if, you know, it made it very difficult because one, the jelly paint print was moving, but two, I used paper different to the size of the paper underneath or I hadn't measured it out. So, um, and I didn't even think about it, to be honest with you, this is probably a tad bit wider. So this bit here, on our next do jelly paper printing is exactly the same size. I've got it exactly the same size. And by the way, um, watercolour paper was best for me, personally, my choice. Um, I haven't tried mixed media yet, media yet. So yeah, pop. If you pop it in line with these. And if you are using um, a bigger piece of paper, minute. Say so if you were using this one and I would before you start printing is if you haven't got one of these glass trays you can just put a bit of cardboard down and just put a bit of uh, washi tape along here see so and down the sides where it comes to and then you've got a good marker indication always remember and this is easy because it's a perforated top I know it's the top but um, make sure that you know that that's, you're putting it in the same place. Look through this one. This one, you can just see the impression of a cat in there. I love the colors of this. Um, and it's clearer here. I only put actually two layers on this one, but I loved it. I love the colors and I'll probably do some sort of mixed media on top of this. Um, this is quite a nice one. But again, as I say, you know, I've lost that flowery shape underneath and this was with large bubble wrap. This one I didn't finish at all because I'm thinking again, you know, you have that time where it's just like you're starting your artwork with a blank piece of white paper. I think I may just actually paint the cat on top of there. And for the stencil of that, gone. I just made it myself with just a bit of um, cardboard from different packets of things. Now, the other thing that happened to me after I jelly plate printed is that I because I did so much. I was <laughs> so loving it so much. I did all these other on bits of paper, you know, ghost prints, rolling things off, just reprinting. And I had all of these just odd bits. Um, and I just felt inclined to do a collage. And it sort of took its own shape, really. And it's something that I probably would never have even thought of if I hadn't done the jelly plate printing. So this is what I ended up. And I don't know if you can see, I mean, this has got a Mod Pod on it. So it's got like a, a matte finish. Basically, I just sketched out a picture. And this again, and I don't like to waste things. So this is just the cardboard of an old sketch pad. Um, so I basically sketched out um, with a, just a plain piece of copy of paper, what I wanted to draw. And then I just cut out all the different pieces and made stencils of it. I did the background first. Um, you see here, down here, this is this one. And you've got some of this for the back of the hills. This was what I used for the sky, really thin bit of paper. And this bit here for this hill here. And I just used um, graphic liners and graphic pens, um, Posca pen and pastels just to shade it and make it more realistic. And then I put the houses are cut pieces as well as and the tree and the pathway. Um, I did spray it with a fixative, just a pastel fixative, and then I popped um, Hodge Podge over the top. I was really pleased with this. I mean, it's not something that I've done before, but um, yeah, 
was uh, it was lovely.